Okay, so let us continue our short course on wave optics. In the last lecture, I gave a brief introduction of interference and we saw that how wave optics came into picture. Young demonstrated that the fringes obtained on the screen were due to interference of light. Now, let us try to study in detail the intensity distribution of the fringes. Now, what did Young took in his experiment, in his double slit experiment? The first most important thing to note down is that he took the two sources in Young's double slit experiment were derived from the same source. What does it mean? When the two sources are derived from the same source, then it means that the two sources are coherent. They are having the same phase difference, constant phase difference. Why it is required to have a constant phase difference? Because if the two sources are not coherent, then there are sudden changes in the phase occurring in short intervals of uh, time around 10 to the power minus 8 seconds. And so although interference fringes may exist on the screen for such a short interval, but they will shift their position each time the phase changes. So it would be difficult for us to observe the pattern. So now how to obtain two sources from a single source. For example, if I have a source here S and the waves are incident from left, then the waves will emanate in semicircle from this source and now I keep two sources in front of this, two slits in front of this S1 and S2. So the wave front which is coming from S will be divided into two. So that is why for Young's double slit experiment we also say that it is occurring due to division of wave front. Now, from these two sources, we will we'll get two waves with constant phase difference. And let us take the two sources of same amplitude A and try to see the pattern obtained on the screen because of these two sources. Now, let us see how is the intensity modified due to the formation of these fringes? We will see that bright fringes are due to constructive interference and the dark fringes will be due to destructive interference. Now, let us see the pattern obtained on the screen. Let us take a monochromatic light of wavelength lambda. Another important point to note that I am taking monochromatic light of wavelength lambda. If I take, for example, a white light, which has a combination of wavelengths, then again the interference will happen. But it is possible that the bright fringe may overlap with the dark fringe of another wavelength. And we would not be able to see clearly the interference pattern. Now, let us take monochromatic light. And then the waves are emerging from A and B, which I have shown earlier in to you. Now, these two sources are coherent. I will take the screen and then these two will interfere at point P. And let us take the displacements due to these two waves as Y1 and Y2. These two waves let us take having the same amplitude A and a constant phase difference phi. Let us see. That is y1 is equal to a sine omega t and y2 is equal to a sine omega t plus phi.
So let us mark this equation as 1 and this is as equation 2. Now, from the principle of superposition, I will get the resultant amplitude as y is equal to y1 plus y2. Let us see how my resultant amplitude looks like. A sin omega t plus A sin omega t plus phi. Now I can expand this sin A plus B as sin A cos B plus plus cos A sin B. Now from the first two terms I can write as A sin omega t. I will take it as common 1 plus cos phi plus cos omega t sin phi. Now let us redefine it. Let us redefine. We can take A into 1 plus cos phi as R cos theta equation number 3 then A into sorry we missed A here. A sin phi is equal to R sin theta. Let us mark this equation as 4. Now squaring and adding equation 3 and 4 I will get the value of r. You can check. Because here we have cos theta, sin, sin theta. If I square cos square theta, on the right hand side I will get and here I will get sin square theta. So when I add this, this will be amount equal to 1. So I will get the value of r. So I will get r as r square as a square 1 plus cos phi whole square plus a square sin square phi. If I expand this a square plus a square cos square phi plus 2a square cos square phi plus a square just expanding a square sin square phi. Now if I combine this cos square phi and sin square phi I will get again 1 a square plus a square will be 2 a square from here. So I will get two a square from these first, second and fourth term 2a square and then this term. Uh, if I take it common, I will get 1 plus cos square phi, which I can, sorry, this uh, square is not there, 1 plus cos phi. This is equal to 2a square into 2 cos square phi by 2. So finally, I get my resultant amplitude r square as 4a square cos square phi by 2. This is my equation number 5. So now you can see that my the amplitude is 4a square cos square phi by 2. Now if I want to find the intensity, the intensity is directly proportional to square of the amplitude. So I can write 
that i is directly proportional to r square and i get the value of i as 4a square cos square phi by 2 this is my final result for the intensity which i get on the screen due to superposition of two waves having a constant phase difference as phi and where a is the amplitude of both the waves now if i want to plot c my intensity pattern i on y axis and phi on x axis i will see that when phi is equal to 0 i will get the maximum intensity so my the intensity will look like like this and at phi is equal to pi i will get minimum intensity again i will get a maxima you can find all the values pi 2 pi pi by 2 maximum again so my intensity will look like this this is how i will get the fringes on the screen by taking by the phenomena of interference now we'll see what are the conclusions so the conclusion from my this graph is that all the maximas are at the same height and how much is this maxima this is 4 a square I can see from this formula that when, when my intensity when phi is equal to 0 this will be this quantity will be 1 and I will get the maximum intensity as 4 a square and the minimum intensity is 0 now what are the conclusions the first thing we observe that the maximas are of at equal height and all the maximas are equidistant corresponding minimas are also at same distance so these are my conclusions all the maximum minimas are equidistant and all the maximas are of equal height now there is another very important question of fundamental importance what is that we have seen here that my at minimas I am getting zero intensity so where is my energy going because from the law of conservation of energy the energy cannot be destroyed so where is this going why do I getting here minima so the answer to this question is that the energy which apparently disappears at the minima is actually still present at maxima where the intensity is greater than which would be produced by the two beams separately now you can see we got the formula of intensity as 4 a square cos square phi by 2 you all know that average value of cos square phi by 2 will be half so my average intensity will be 4 a square into half as 2 a square now if I do not take interference then independently the two waves have amplitude a and they will contribute intensity as a square so the total intensity without interference would be 2 a square which is exactly same as the average intensity so from the graph which we got earlier here we see that the average intensity is 2a square so the energy which is not is not seen here basically it has been is present in the maxima which has intensity of 4a square so energy is conserved basically what happened is there is a mere re so there is a re distribution of energy still energy is conserved but it is merely redistributed in maxima and minima okay now in the next lecture we would be we will study that 
where are what is the location of my fringes and we'll see some more things in detail okay thank you for now